Ah, uh, it was the summer of 2005. What was supposed to be a time for fun, freedom, frolicking, and tomfoolery. I was daydreaming about playing baseball, going to the movies, and hiking through the hills. However, my very nice Indian parents had different ideas. They didn't want me loitering around. After all, they didn't drop everything and move to the US so I could have fun. This was about legacy, not quality of life. And they wanted me to get a Nobel Prize in medicine. So I asked my friends, what were they up to that summer? Apparently they were making frappuccinos at Starbucks, feeding America's insane caffeine addiction and serving all those artists writing their screenplays. So I marched on back to my parents with this idea. Mom, Dad, I would like to be a barista this summer. You want to be a chaiwala? Who knows? Maybe this is a path to one day leading a great democracy. Don't talk nonsense. Come with us. So then I was whisked away to a local hospital because I needed to start my path to becoming Dr. Subramanyam. Now, as fortune would have it, this wasn't your average hospital. It was a veteran's hospital and the average age was over 80 and all of them had served in the US military. Now, if you subtract 80 or 85 from 2005, you'll see that every single one of them or almost all had served during World War II. And as a big history buff, I couldn't help but ask them, what were their experiences like? And to tell you the truth, when I was supposed to be learning about geriatric medicine, I was just hanging out with all the patients, talking about D-Day, talking about Pearl Harbor. They had lived through these. They had marched with Patton through France, through Germany. They had been on bombing campaigns in the Pacific. And I got an in-depth and personal look at history from within that contrasted with everything I had learned in the textbook. Essentially, history had come alive. And I couldn't have thought of a better way, a more enjoyable way to spend that summer. Now, while the veterans were fascinating me with their amazing stories, I was really happy that I could fascinate them back with a little party trick I had developed. You see, going back to my parents, well, other kids had baseball and basketball and football, American football coaches. My parents got me a chess coach. Yep, a chess coach, all right? Because after all, chess is a sport, the brain is a muscle. Now, this gentleman was one of the finest coaches in California. And when we started, I brought out the board and he put the board aside. He said, we don't need that. I was like, how are we gonna do chess without a chess board and pieces? And he said, it's all in the mind. And he started going through games, simply reciting the moves. The pawn moves to E4. The other pawn moves to E5, knight to F3. And I had to keep track of the entire game in my head. It's called blindfold chess. And I started getting better and better and better at that. And that's how we trained. No board, no pieces, all in the head. And this allowed me to visualize various strategic and tactical items on the board and outplay my opponents because I could see multiple moves into the future. All right. And as I kept going into chess, as I got better, I saw numerous connections between chess and military history. There were principles that applied on the chessboard in terms of time, material, quality, that also had to do with how soldiers and generals fought World War II. And this was why the summer was so enriching. I made these connections that I never thought possible. And curiously, this is one of the items I discussed in my college applications. So do you have a curious combination? Two different, uh, uh, items or subjects or domains that fascinate you that you can connect in an unintuitive way. Uh, let us know, write to us or write in the comments uh, section and we look forward to hearing your story as well.